bro this is eagles back with the new video this one is a fun video um i put out a short maybe about eight months ago about jlo and ben i was looking at their synastry and you guys responded to it really well and recently they just got married and also jlo's birthday is coming up in a few days so i thought this would be the perfect time to do a long form video um to discuss their synastry and when i say synastry we're talking about their astrological compatibility um and i'm actually really really intrigued by both of their charts because it's nearly identical but there's a few um changes so kind of in like their venus sign and i'm going to talk about that in here for all my people who follow me who are not astrology heads don't worry i'm going to try to explain it to you in layman's terms as best as possible and if you don't know much about astrology, this is an opportunity for you to learn to figure out how does the planets and this energy influence us, okay? If you guys like this comment content, pardon me, definitely hit that thumbs up. Some of y'all be acting real stingy with that. It's free. Make that thumbs up button holla for me, all right? So let's get into it. J-Lo, she was born July 24th, 1969 in New York. Um, that makes her a Leo Sun woman. Next, we have Ben Affleck, who was born in Berkeley, California. August 15th, 1972 at 2.53 a.m. Um, this is supposed to be his accurate birth time and we're gonna use it, we're gonna run with it. When I looked at this chart, it makes sense. Based off of what I know about Ben, um, it makes sense his birth time. So we're gonna discuss that as well. Um, if anybody wants a personal birth chart reading or you want me to do a synastry reading, that information is below. You can go ahead and book that with me. Um, and if you've had your chart read before and you're watching this video, let people know what your experience was like, all right? Um, one thing that I'm really fascinated by is that we have two Leo energy in a relationship, okay? I can see why, because Leos are definitely drawn to um, one another. It's kind of like you want to meet your counterpart who's going to be equally as passionate equally as distinguished from other people um, and somebody who likes to kind of go big and bad. And what's also interesting is that their moon sign is both in Scorpio. Shout out to all my Scorpio moons. I love Scorpio moon, all right? That is one of my favorite moon sign placements, even though a lot of people crap on that placement because they feel like it's dark and murky, but that's why I like it. I like that, okay? Do not be scared of la oscuridad, okay? Don't be afraid of the darkness. That's where you find the light. And Scorpio moon will definitely transform you, okay? So I can already tell you right now, when you have their moons conjunct one another, this is not a timid partnership. I talked about this in the short. This is a highly sexually charged relationship. This is a couple that I could see who will be very interested in doing Tantra, okay? This is a couple who I could see who probably likes to manifest through sex. I don't know if you guys know that, but it's very possible to manifest through sex. Um, this energy, especially when it's in Scorpio, this is not, you don't approach sexuality and your relationships in a very lighthearted manner, okay? Sex is all encompassing, all knowing to you, and it's not something that is easily thrown around or wasted. So I can, I can let you know that both of these people are probably extremely possessive of one another. Um, and Jennifer's moon is gonna fall in Ben's fifth house. So this is this, sex is a, a great pastime for them, okay? Um, might be open to going to like swingers resorts or you know, just a new resort, a lot of different things that might be very taboo to some couples. This couple is probably not gonna be afraid of that, okay? Um, we got the Mercury signs, their Mercury's are conjunct one another. You got Mercury in Leo. Okay, this is a household. We're probably inside of their house. It's very loud and noisy. Okay, it's lots of arguing, very New York style of communication. Like you guys know how people from New York tend to talk, the stereotypes where it's very loud. It's not necessarily them being upset, but it's just a very aggressive manner of communicating. This is how they naturally get down with one another. Lots of trash talking, lots of, I don't want to say like put downs in a negative sense, but lots of sparring with one another okay the way that they think about life the way that they communicate is very similar um to one another where we're going to see a difference is in their venus style we've seen jennifer's venus and gemini throughout her romantic relationships i told you if you guys have watched my venus series the shorts venus and gemini likes a lot of variety okay venus and gemini is attracted to um 
lots of stimulation mentally. They like partners who they can learn from. We've seen that Jennifer has dated a bevy of different guys, okay? Venus in Gemini is not someone who's easily committable, okay? Um, this is a partner who likes to experience a lot of variety and they can be very flirtatious. They can also be big cheaters as well. Let's just keep it 100. Um, so that's very interesting that this is in her chart. Now, when we look at Jennifer, what's interesting is that obviously she's a very feminine woman. She has a very beautiful aesthetic. Um, her avatar is all woman. Everything about her is that, but Jennifer has a lot of masculine energy. So that means when she approaches relationships, she's not thinking or behaving the way that her aesthetic will present her. She's coming to the table like, nah, very logical, um, much traditionally with how a man would approach a relationship. This is juxtaposed with Ben who has a Venus in Cancer. This is a very challenging placement for this man to have. And I'm gonna tell you why. Venus in Cancer is very romantic. It's very old fashioned. It wants to be, you know, canoodled up under a blanket watching a nice romantic movie with a fireplace lit by the side and some wine. It wants to make deep eye contact. It doesn't want to be out in the open with everyone. It wants a very private love. So when you partner with someone who is whose love style is very open and free, that's gonna be a challenge, okay? Venus and Cancer does not want everyone to experience their energy. Venus and Cancer is like, I remember everything about you. I remember your favorite nail polish. Venus and Cancer is very sentimental, okay? So this is the type of lover that's gonna remember everything that you like, the small, minute details of what makes their person their, their person, right? So he's going to find specialness in how she styles her hair. He's going to find specialness in, you know, maybe her favorite snacks or bringing her breakfast in bed. This is a, a partner who wants to be completely devoted. Now, on the flip side, when Ben feels slighted, that Venus in Cancer is going to be very possessive. OK, Venus in Cancer is like if I open up my world to you, you're going to be very respectful of that. If I feel like you're being disrespectful to me or you're treating my sensitivity and how I approach love as a weakness, I can be very vindictive. And when you couple that Venus in Cancer with that moon in Scorpio, that is not a good combination, family. <laughs> that, that's like I will F your whole life up if you play me wrong. OK, this this energy can be very channel, cha challenging especially for men, because men in Western society, we're not conditioned to be very emotive in love. We're not conditioned to be very romantic or to be very sentimental. This is a guy who probably has, he probably has pictures and text messages saved from when they first started talking. You know, he's probably like, you know, with a blue, not a Bluetooth, a, um, what do you call it? Um, one of those two way pages where he has old messages and, you know, beeper and all that kind of stuff saved because that has significance to, to him. It, it feels very special. It's a person who's saving movie stubs, all right? Old candy rappers, like, you love this stuff, Jennifer. This is what you like, sweetie. And she's like, oh my gosh, you're so cheesy. Um, this is that energy. Um, her Mars is in Sagittarius, his is in Virgo. You know, this is very opposite style. He wants to be very methodical when he is in disagreement. His, his energy and exertion is like, I'm gonna do things in a logical manner. Hers is like, I'm doing what feels right at that moment. You know, Mars and Sagittarius can be very explosive. So when Jennifer gets an attitude, when she gets upset about something, I mean, I could see this energy playing out where she's throwing stuff at the wall, breaking glass. You know, this is all alleged, but I'm just gonna tell you as a professional astrologer, when I see these different combinations of energy play out, this is how this is influencing a person. Um, not to say this is good or bad, this is just kind of how this energy gets down. What's interesting is um, what's interesting is that we're gonna move over to Ben's personal chart. Um, he has Venus in the first house. I told you guys, Venus in the first house, his ascendant is in Cancer as well. Um, so that's that's an interesting combination too. He he has his Venus um, touching that ascendant as well. Um, so this can make you know him very alluring to um people who find him attractive venus in the first house can give you a very congenial aesthetic it can make you conventionally attractive to majority of the population um 
I'm gonna jump to this fourth house because this one is most interesting to me. Ben has Uranus and Pluto in his fourth house. This is not an easy placement, family. This is not an easy placement at all. If you got Uranus in your fourth house or you got Pluto in the fourth house and you feel comfortable speaking out in the comments, talk on it, it's how we build community. Um, I can tell you, I don't have these placements. I know people who do. Uranus in the fourth house, this is like your family could be very freaking strange, okay? Like this is the definition of like weird and weird in like every negative connotation possible to majority of people like this could be the family where everyone on the block is like don't go by that house okay um with pluto being there though this family could be very good at hiding that weirdness this family could be very good at hiding secrets when pluto is in your wherever whatever house pluto is in that's where your karma lies okay so when you have pluto in your fourth house your house of family your house of ancestry I can tell you now, Ben is always going to have a very, it's going to be very intense for Ben, no matter if he's single or partnered, okay? This is part of his life, his life path. Pluto in that fourth house, you are going to feel like your family is your worst freaking enemy, okay? Drake also has Pluto in the fourth house, okay? Your family could have a lot of secrets that you don't know about but you deal with the consequences of those secrets. So maybe your family was in the mob and you don't understand why your family doesn't allow you to go certain places because they know stuff about their history and what's been going on that you don't know. When you have Uranus in the fourth house too, you may be one of, you may want to be completely detached from your family lineage. Pluto in that fourth house too could give you mommy issues, okay? This could make it to where you get mommy dearest, okay? This could be a mother who is completely controlling she could be abusive. This could be really a lot of vile stuff, family. A lot of people like to tiptoe around it, but y'all know this is the 12th house. We got to talk about it. Pluto in that fourth house could be the worst of the worst, all right? And I'm not saying that to be negative. I'm just saying that let's keep it real and 100 about it. In the highest form of manifestation, Pluto in the fourth house could be someone who's very intuitive. I can tell you that Ben is probably very psychic. He probably is maybe afraid of those abilities if he has not been conditioned to appreciate that. Um, but another interesting thing that I'll point out on a positive note, Ben is meant to be partnered in his lifetime. His north node falls in his seventh house seventh house of partnership so throughout life ben is constantly going to be learning from the people around him i don't have jennifer's exact birth time and people are wondering why am i not speaking on her house placements i don't have her birth time so i cannot um touch on that but this is the birth time that i have for him she is a karmic partner for him i'll mention that in the first short that i did this is past life partners coming together now on the high end they understand each other like no other. I told you guys, this is kind of like when you meet someone who literally mirrors who you are. Um, I can tell you now, whether they stay together or don't, they're always going to be drawn to each other until one of them leaves this earth. And I don't want to sound morbid, but I am a medium, but... <laughs> I can tell you now, if one of them were to leave, the other one would be on some I want to go with you type stuff. This is very like Romeo Juliet type of energy to where it's like, I don't want to enjoy this planet or this planet sucks to me if my other half is not there. Even if they hate each other, they have the ability based off their placements, especially with the Scorpio moon, they both communicate to each other on a very subconscious level. So it's like, she could be sending him signals like she's in Australia. He's in, you know, Oklahoma. And he's like, Jennifer's thinking about me. I got to see her. I got to get to her right now. You know, even if they like are telling each other, I hate you. They're verbalizing that, you know, that Mercury and Leo is just talking big ish. I can't stand you, but you get on my nerves. Yada, yada. They could be in separate rooms and be like, all right, I want to see you now. I'm sorry. I love you. I miss you. They're not saying this out of their mouth, but they're feeling this on a psychic energetic level. Some of you have been in relationships where you don't have to verbalize what you're feeling to a partner. They automatically just know that they feel it, right? It's the same thing that they have. Um, unfortunately, there can also be a lot of deception in this relationship too. Um, Jennifer has Neptune, her, her, her Neptune is in Scorpio and it falls in Ben's fifth house. So this could indicate there's um, 
Jennifer, I, Jennifer is the aggressor in this relationship. She has a lot more power and control over Ben. And Jennifer can use her power and influence to transform Ben in a positive manner or a negative manner. I think I can see her energy playing out where she gets a kick out of doing both. I, I can see that. I can see Jennifer being like on some just on some real stuff, just telling her friends like, "Look, I'm about to show you how I mess with his head. Like, like I'm I'm getting ready to show you how I got him." I can see her doing that. But the thing is, Jennifer feels fulfilled by Ben's love, even though she could find him to be kind of like I don't want to say soft in a negative sense. I'm, this is just how I'm picking up her energy too. Um, I've met Jennifer as well. Uh, I think she's... Apologize for that noise in the background. I've met Jennifer before too. Um, I think Jennifer is cool. She's a very talented actress. Um, but I could see her being like talking a lot of trash. Like, you know, he's like so lovey-dovey. He always wants to kiss under me and, you know, be hugging me. I'd be like, dude, like get off me. You know, no me toques, okay? I, like, I don't want you to touch me right now. Like, I'm good. And then I could see, like, if she's away from him, her just being, like, very upset. Like, I want to go home. I want to be with him. I, I don't, I, there's nothing for me here. Like, I, I'm ready to go home. I don't want anybody talking to me. I don't want anybody around me. I want to be with him. So it's kind of like she knows, too, like, he brings out a certain energy. He might remind her of her childhood and growing up. I, I can definitely see that he made the nurturing style that he brings into her life could remind her of what she wanted in her childhood. So I could see them both kind of playing off of things that um, they didn't get. Ben, I could see him being very attracted to a, a naturally an assertive woman, a woman who's, you know, not afraid to grab the bull by the horns. Jennifer definitely has it in her in her chart. Um, and I think that's probably what holds him in. And Jennifer appreciates having a partner who is able to match her intensity, but knows how to be nurturing and giving when it's time to. Um, let me see. What else do I want to say um, about this? I mean, when they love, they love hard. When they fight, they fight equally as hard. Ben has Chiron in his 10th house. That's not an easy placement to have. Chiron in any house is not easy. Chiron is an asteroid. It's kind of like your Achilles heel. Wherever placement, wherever house it's in is going to be like a challenge for you in this lifetime. It's interesting that he has that in his 10th house. So that means that Throughout his career, his reputation can definitely be hit or miss. Um, and other people could have a negative or a positive influence on his reputation. I don't really keep up with Ben, so I don't know how the public, you know, perceives him. You guys can let me know that. I do know that he did at one point, I believe, had some issues with gambling and then also with alcohol, I believe. And that would make sense. He has Moon in his fifth house. Um that can give you some definitely some gambling stuff fifth house is like gambling entertainment you know it could be um kind of like one-off partners romantically and stuff too another interesting thing is ben is not a pluto in the 12th house um but he is a saturn in the 12th house person um saturn in the 12th house is not a very easy placement this could make you naturally really depressive um this can make you someone who it's hard for you to express what troubles you it's hard for you to articulate kind of like what your demons are. So maybe that's another thing that Jennifer helps to do because that Scorpio moon is not going to it's not going to allow any type of stone to be left on turn. Um, so she probably is able to help him with that Saturn with that Saturn placement with this karmic placement. Whenever you meet a karmic partner, twin flame, they definitely have this energy. Um, and I will feel comfortable calling them Twin Flames, but whenever you have that placement, it's not always love and light. Sometimes your partner could be like Dr. Jekyll, Dr. Hyde, and you don't know if they're giving you like a medicine uh, um, or if they're giving you poison. I said this to say both of them keep one another on their toes if they both choose to operate in maturity and, and you know, light, then they could, you know, help each other evolve and ascend into... Um, like philanthropists. So let's say that Ben and J-Lo operate in their highest form. I could see them being a couple who wants to start a charity for uh, for kids, you know, or give back to communities and stuff. They have the, the energy to, um, to give back to disenfranchised communities. Um, on the shadow side, this could be breakup to makeup, breakup to makeup, breakup to makeup energy. 
But either way, I, I'm going to stand on it. I don't see them walking away from it. Before they got married again, when I put out the first one, I told you this is an irresistible moth to a flame connection. So even if they tell each other, like, I don't like you or I don't want to be with you, even if they tell each other, I don't like you, I don't want to be with you, they argue, they fuss in their fight, they're not going to be happy or at peace without one another. But when they're with one another, they're also not going to be at peace either. It's kind of like a catch-22. Anybody who has like Pluto and Uranus in that fourth house, um, especially Pluto in the fourth house, you could end up being um, alone later in life. Only because the people who you live with could just cause so much hell to you. So Jennifer, escuchame mami, okay? Be nice, be kind, you know appreciate the love that you got Ben treat her like a lady how she want to be treated and as always think without they know Vemo see thing a